What's up, Oasis Kids? My name is Olivia. No matter where you are right now, thanks for joining us for Kids Church. We are in a new series learning about some big names from the Bible. But first, let's kick it off by hearing from Olivia. Oh wait, that's me. <laughs> Hello, my funky fancy friends. Olivia here. Today I'm outside in Malibu, California, about to conquer this mountain. Welcome to Olivia Trivia. Let's go. Olivia Trivia, yay, 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 yay. So this mountain is called Sandstone Peak and it is the tallest peak in the entire Santa Monica mountain range here in Southern California, standing at 3,111 feet tall. But do you know what the tallest mountain range in the world is? If you chose the Himalayas, you are correct. With Mount Everest standing at 8,848 meters tall. Oh, here's our map. Let's grab a photo of it just in case we get lost or the trail gets sketchy along the way. Now, the Santa Monica mountain range is native to Southern California, but what does Santa Monica mean? If you guessed St. Monica, that is the correct answer. Settlers came to California and named the expanse of this great land after an early African Christian saint named Monica. Oh no. Oh, I was having so much fun with you playing Olivia Trivia. Now, now I don't know where I am. What do I do? The map. Okay. Okay, this way. I was heading that. This way. We're going this way. Sandstone Peak. Oh, phew. I almost made a huge mistake by not paying attention. Thank goodness I had my map and that sign back there to point me in the right direction to make sure that I was on the right path. And you know, this is really interesting because this kind of thing happens in life all the time. No, I'm not hiking every single day. But when I'm having fun, when life is just good, without realizing it, I can start making mistakes. And that is not the path that I want to take for my life. So how do we take the right path? Well, Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 say, to trust in the Lord with your whole heart, do not depend on your own understanding, to seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So just like I trusted my map to lead me down the right trail, we can trust Holy Spirit to do the same with our lives. Everyone makes mistakes. Trust me, I do. Even if you talk badly about someone or disrespectful, cheat on your homework, God still loves you. He forgives you and his spirit lives in you. So trust that he'll let you know. By speaking to us through the Bible, through a dream when we're sleeping, and even through people who love us and want the best for us. See you next time. Bye. Woo! That mountain was huge. Now, for today, we are learning about a big character of the Bible. His name starts with M. It rhymes with roses, choses. Did you guess it? It's Moses. Moses got to witness some pretty amazing things because he chose to believe in God. He trusted God's plans and believed God would show him the right path. Let's watch. Stories of the Bible, Moses and the Red Sea. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time where Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh -oh. So Moses ran away from Egypt to the land of Midian. Many years later, God called Moses back to Egypt to rescue his people with the help of his brother Aaron. The Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go, and God showed his power throughout all Egypt by sending plagues. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard, and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up and heard a great cry in Egypt. Huh? For there was not an Egyptian house in which someone was not dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and told them to leave Egypt with the Israelites. 
So the Israelites immediately left Egypt and made their way for the promised land, taking with them many riches from Egypt. They took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. God led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God told Moses to have the people camp along the shore of the Red Sea. Okay, got it. We're stopping here. God told Moses that the Egyptians would come after them, but that God would show his glory and power through this. When word reached Pharaoh that the Israelites had gone, Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. The Egyptians found the Israelites camped along the shore of the sea. As Pharaoh and his armies came close, the Israelites panicked. They cried out to God and asked Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then God said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. All right. As night came, the pillar of cloud became fire and it went between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and God opened a path through the water with a strong wind. Whoa. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Come on, are you? So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians chased the Israelites into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, God looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, God said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Who got it? Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but God swept them into the sea. That is how God rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God had shown against the Egyptians, they were amazed. They put their faith in God and in his servant, Moses. Oh my, that is phenomenal. Because Moses followed God's path for him, he got to see God do amazing things in his life, like part a sea. God has amazing things planned for you too. So when you feel stuck like Moses and the Israelites, God will show you which path to take. Oh, I got something else for you. We're gonna watch another episode of Jerry Reviews. Let's take a look. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Jerry Reviews. I'm Jerry and I'll be doing the reviewing. This time around, I'm focusing on one of my all time favorite toys, Lego. I've assembled a team of master builders to help me assemble these Lego sets. Together, we'll build a new set each week and give you the lowdown on how good I think it is. Sound good? Great, let's get building. Welcome back everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Jerry Reviews. This week we're adding something new to the mix. That's right, the remote controlled stunt racer from the Lego Technic series. There's 324 pieces in this thing. I loved RC cars growing up, but I've never played with a Lego one. I'm excited to build this one, but it has its work cut out for it. It needs to be a quality Lego set and a fun RC car. To help me test out this product, I've once again brought along my team. The master builders are waiting in the Lego assembly room, you know, the LAR for short, to start on the build. Let's head over there to see how this RC car stunt racer fares. Thanks, Jerry. Welcome to the Lego assembly room. Here's a Lego master builder tip. Now with every Lego set comes pieces in individual bags. Now don't build them all at the same time. Build them separately. Let's get building. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, we assembled and tested the Technic Remote Controlled Stunt Racer. But time for my thoughts. To start, I think I'm gonna give this appearance maybe like a four out of five. I like that it has treads instead of wheels, and it made me wanna take this guy outside and go off-roading, so to speak, maybe later. Assembly, you know, I'm gonna give it like a two out of five. The racer is pretty easy to build, but the process is not all that fun. For the overall score, I think I'm gonna give this one a three out of five. I like the design, but ultimately, it feels more like a remote controlled car than an actual Lego set. No surprise there, but still a little disappointing. It's cool to play with, but I don't see it being something that I use much. It's also the most expensive LEGO set I've reviewed so far, and I'm not sure if it's really worth the price. Um, let's just say I've dropped it a few times. The remote control is a little unreliable and hard to use. If you don't point it directly at this guy, it doesn't really pick it up. If you're not careful, you can end up flipping the racer or going the wrong direction pretty easily. Trust me, I've done it way too many times. I was pretty excited for this one, but it looks like looks can be deceiving. Pardon the pun, but I want to change gears here a little. You probably won't be driving for a while, but I'm sure most of you have gotten turned around or lost at some point in your life. Without realizing it, we can start to go the wrong direction sometimes in life. A wrong turn in life might look like telling a lie, or gossiping, or not being very loving to a sibling. Everyone makes mistakes, but it's important to always try and get back on track. Even the best racers still need their trusty pit crew, just like the most responsible people still needed guidance from God to help them get back on the road and keep going. If we try to go at it alone, we're most likely to end up lost or on the wrong path, both in racing and in life. Moses is one of the most important figures in the Bible. He was chosen by God to lead the Israelites out of slavery and into the promised land, but it wasn't an easy journey. Moses and the Israelites faced obstacle after obstacle. And when they were finally free, Pharaoh changed his mind and sent an army after them. But God provided a way out by literally parting the Red Sea in half for them to walk through. He made a way for them when it seemed like there was no other way. He walked with them every step of their journey and showed them which path to take. In order to stay on the right path, we have to trust God even when it isn't easy. We can do that by reading our Bibles faithfully, praying to God regularly, and asking for wisdom from the spiritual leaders in our life. God will also help us by giving us the Holy Spirit when we believe in Him. The Holy Spirit helps make good decisions that keep us aligned with God's path. How cool is that? At your age, your path is mostly laid out for you. You go to school, you do your homework, play sports, and spend time with your friends and family. You might not have big, life-changing decisions to make or enemies to run from like the Israelites, but you can practice what it looks like to stay on the right path in everyday things too, like keeping a good attitude, treating people well, choosing not to cheat on a test, obeying parents or coaches in your life, and even being a good friend. When you practice choosing the right path in the little things, it becomes easier to choose the right path in the big things too. Sometime this week, say a little prayer to God asking that he would guide you and protect you on your path. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this episode helpful. I'm going to go test this guy outside, but I'll see you next week with a new review. See you then. Um, but I think uh, I want to go off-roading. Uh-oh. Um, let's just uh, take this outside. Uh-uh. I did not know Lego had remote control cars too. And you might have been wondering what it looks like to stay on the right path, especially when it seems like your parents are the ones that decide your path. But did you hear what Jerry said? You're also following God's path for your life when you choose what is right and good in everyday things like keeping a good attitude, treating people with kindness, not cheating, obeying your parents, and even being a good friend. It's true, when you choose to believe God and follow the right path he shows you, it becomes easier to continue to choose the right path and walk with God. I'm gonna pass it to Max to close us out. I love hanging out with y'all. I'll see you next time, okay? Bye. What's up Oasis kids, it's Max, and I had so much fun learning all about Moses with you today. You know, he believed that God would show him the right path, and he did. You can trust God too, by believing that he will show you the right path for your life as well. Why don't we pray together and ask God to help show us the right paths in our life and to help us believe in him. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for caring for us. 
Help us to believe that you will show us the right path for our lives. When we don't know what to do, help us to listen to you so that we know what is good, what is true, and what is the right thing to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oasis Kids, I am having so much fun with this series and learning how to believe in God. And I am praying that you have fun learning a little bit more about God every day. Guess what? We have some discussion questions coming up to help us think about everything that we learned today. Remember, God loves you so much. We love you so much, and we can't wait to see you soon. Make it an awesome week.